Hello and thanks so much for tuning in today. My name is Luca and today I felt guided to talk about the Arcturians. The Arcturians are a group of star beings from the star Arcturus in the Boötes constellation. And today I felt guided to do something a little bit different. First I'm going to be talking about my personal experiences with the Arcturians and then I'm going to be looking into a tarot card reading to see what messages there are for us. And I set the intention to connect with the Arcturians, with the Arcturian energy, with the intention to spark one's curiosity, to find out more about these beautiful light beings, and to trigger the expansion of one's consciousness, and to trigger healing in the process. Arcturians presented themselves to me in a dream, in a way that they made their presence known. And while they were showing up in this dream, they made me aware of the presence of multidimensional star beings. And I've always been open to the idea of the existence of extraterrestrials, but I've never thought about the idea that there are multidimensional beings that can actually interact with us very easily. They reawakened my awareness that multidimensional star beings exist. And I was quite surprised because I did not expect to interact with star beings at all at this time. So in this dream, the Arcturians presented themselves as two beings. There were two individual beings and they presented themselves as tall, slender, beautiful beings with elongated heads and a dark blue indigo blue color but the focus of the whole scene was really the lie at the center of their chest and with this they made me aware of the fact that they are etherical beings their nature is light they are crystalline beings crystalline light beings plasmic beings that are etheric in nature and the Arcturians they are an expression of group consciousness so it's not like a bunch of individuals in a group, but it's really this group matrix. It's this group energy, this group consciousness. However, the Arcturians, they choose to present themselves as individual beings in form. And this is to make it easier for us to interact with them. But they are making it very, very clear that this is not how they look like, because they really exist in a six dimensional realm or like from six dimension to higher dimension as a group consciousness. They may appear to us according to the beliefs that we hold. So to some people it might appear, this energy might appear as an angel or as a very angelic energy. To others it might appear as like extraterrestrials with blue skin and elongated uh, heads and to others it might appear as etherical beings or as forms of light or to others it might just be as this loving presence or this very soothing energy, this very loving energy. But it's really, we are the vessels of that light, we are the vessels of that experience and based on how our vessel is shaped is how we are experiencing this energy. And so we're going to go ahead to reveal the cards and to see what messages there are for us from the Arcturus realm and uh, in general to see what the Arcturians would like us to know about them so that it's going to be easier for us to interact with them and to tap into this beautiful energy. So the first card that we have oh, <laughs> is the Fountain card which is, uh, I would say, kind of a joker card, uh, because this card is um, unique to this tarot deck. It's like the 23rd card of the Major Arcana. And the message with this card is really that we are giving this card a meaning. And so for me, this card really it represents a source connection. It represents a light connection. It represents this pillar of light this light connection to source and 
this is very much suited to the Arcturian energy because the Arcturian energy reminds us of our connection to Source. And this is because the Arcturian energy is very balanced. It represents the perfect balance between the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine within. The Arcturians have really mastered the integration of polarities and they can therefore be defined as one of the most advanced species in our galaxy, not because of their technological achievements, but really because of their mastery, because they have mastered the integration of polarity, the integration of the two opposing forces within. And with this balance, with this integration comes wholeness, comes the insight and the elevation, the feeling, the connection, the knowingness that we are one with Source. And Arcturian energy is exactly here to remind us of this connection. It would be very possible for Arcturian beings to materialize in physical form. However, it would be very, very uncomfortable for them to lower their vibration in order to appear physically in our physical dimension, in the third dimension. And that's why they rather choose subtler ways of communication. And this communication really happens through this channel of light, through this subtle communication in higher states of consciousness or in deep states of meditation or in general in dreams or as telepathic messages, as channelings, as visions, as synchronicities, or in general just as signs. So here the question is, how sensitive are we to perceive their energy? How sensitive are we to listen to their signs, to see the signs and synchronicities and to perceive the visions and to really connect with this energy in this light channel, in this light connection? So the reason why most multidimensional star beings do not materialize physically is because they have a way higher vibration than we humans do. So that means if a vibration, a way higher vibration is coming in contact with a lower vibration, all the lower vibrations are being cleared out as to match that higher vibration. And that means if we have a lot of lower vibrations stored in our field, lower vibrations being fear, worry and doubt, an interaction with star beings may trigger even more fear, worry and doubt because all these low vibrations are being cleared out as to match that higher vibration. So we're going to move forward with the next card and the card that we have is the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Coins in this deck. And it's really beautiful because here I'm hearing the garden. So it's really an invitation of what do we want to have in our garden? What seeds would we like to plant? How are we creating this beautiful garden that is our life experience? With every thought, with every action, with everything we put in motion, we're planting a seed in our garden. And here the message is, are the seeds that we're planting in our garden based on our source connection, based on our pillar of light, or are they coming from a place of unresolved trauma? Are they coming from a place of lacks, of limitation, of resistances, of blockages, of unhealed things that are still stored in our field? And there is nothing which is more replenishing, healing and rejuvenating than a source connection. And the Arcturian energy is here to help us find this connection and to help us heal everything which is not in alignment with this connection. We're going to move forward with the next card. And yes, that's exactly what it is, the Four of Cups. It's really the healing of these emotional imbalances. It's really this healing or whenever we have the feeling that things are stagnant, whenever we have the feeling that the glass is half empty instead of half full, we are really invited to connect with Arcturian energy. And it's really important, like I'm hearing that 
whenever we're asking for support of star beings or, or of light beings in general, we always want to use our free will to ask for their connection. Because higher beings or star beings in general, angelic beings, they cannot interfere without our free will consent. So it's really important that we reach out to them and ask for a connection. And whenever our intentions are pure, we always, always, always get the support. So we're moving forward with the next card. It's very interesting, we have the Hermit. And I'm going to move on reviewing the next card and the other deck. And we have Lust, which is the Strength card. And last but not least, we have the, again, <laughs> the Queen of Pentacles, just from a different deck. And so with this, it's really, again, this focus on our garden, this focus on our creation, with a focus not necessarily just on our personal garden, our personal life experience, but the garden that is Mother Nature, the garden that is planet Earth. And the Arcturians are really here to help us rejuvenate and replenish this garden. And it's really, really an invitation to align with this source energy, to really align with the connection to source. And all we need to do is to really tune into this frequency, tune into this energy and to plant the seeds which are coming from this source alignment. From this alignment to our soul and it's very interesting because we have the last card which is the strength card and with this the Arcturians are really saying that whenever there are emotional imbalances or whenever we feel stagnant or whenever we don't feel this confidence this radiance or this lust for life I'm sensing blocked sacral chakra I'm sensing blocked sexuality, blocked inner child, everything that has to do with emotional healing, inner child healing, the uh, healing sexuality and really allowing the flow of creative energies. We can ask for the support of the Arcturians to really bring back this alignment. And whenever we feel like there is a lot of fear stored in our field and whenever we think of star beings and we, there is still fear in ourselves, it is advisable to first work on releasing that fear and really gaining this self-trust and always being in our sovereignty. Whenever we are in our sovereignty, whenever we are embodying that sovereignty with our source connection, nothing can interfere with our being. Our sovereignty is the ultimate protection with this light connection with the sovereignty that comes from this light connection, we are always protected and there is absolutely nothing to fear. And really with the Hermit, I am hearing that we are invited to venture into the unknown, to shine the light into the unknown and to find out more about our being because it's in alignment with our soul. Whenever we feel that it's in alignment with our soul, we are invited to really dare to be confident enough to dare to find out more about ourselves and to find out more about the mystical aspect of who we are and to find out more to dive into this mystical dimension and for this we're really invited to also connect with the Arcturians to ask for DNA activations and to ask for the clearing the purification and the activation of our DNA because when our DNA is being activated, we're tapping into our multidimensional healing potential. We're tapping into our multidimensionality. And it's really this representation of the hermit. We're tapping into this hidden dimension. We're looking into the depth of who we are. And that's not just this physical appearance. We are this source connection. In fact, we are a spark of source. And Arcturian energy is here to remind us of that. And it's really an invitation to 
connect with this energy, to tap into our multidimensional potential and to really see that we are very much connected with all the star beings of this omniverse. Because we're all one, we're all part of this one consciousness ocean of source. And there is no separation between me and you. There is no separation between our star and Arcturus. We're always connected. Star beings don't necessarily need to materialize physically. They don't need to appear in front of us. They are always with us. We're always guided. We always have their guidance. The only thing is, we need to be open to that guidance. We need to listen to that guidance. We want to be receptive for their guidance. We want to listen to the signs and synchronicities and to really be open to receiving this guidance. And we don't necessarily need to identify as a channel or a star seed, or nor do we need to have any special skills or abilities in order to connect with Arcturian energy. We all connect with Arcturian energy the moment we are born and the moment we die. The moment we transition into this incarnation and the moment we transition out of this incarnation. We are passing through the Arcturus realm, which is like a gateway. It's like a bridge between the higher dimensions, between source and these dimensions. So the Arcturus realm is really a gateway, a bridge between the dimensions. And when we transition out of this dimension, out of this incarnation, we're passing through the Arcturus realm, and this serves for the clearing and the recalibrating and the balancing of our consciousness. So our consciousness passes through the Arcturus realm to really replenish our soul and to really find this alignment back to source, which is always there. Our soul is always pristine, but it's really an integration of all the polarities, an integration of all the experiences in polarity so that we can learn from our incarnation, so that we can learn from our experience in polarity, integrating it back to wholeness, back to this source connection. And so Arcturus is way more than a star and the Arcturians are way more than extraterrestrials or light beings. Arcturus is really this bridge, this connection from source to this dimension. And these beings who reside in this realm really have a dedication to serve the beings in the physical dimension because it's also for their interest. Of course, they are doing it out of unconditional love, but they're also learning something about integration. It's really getting more and more insights about the integration of polarities. And this is really what the Arcturian energy is representing. This perfect balance, this unity, this source connection, this very beautiful connection to source with this primal archetypal trust in the source connection we can create this garden that is our life experience and we create not just our personal garden but we are also replenishing and rejuvenating the earth garden which is our planet which is mother earth so really the arcturian energy is here not just to heal the individual not just to heal our soul but to heal the whole planet to replenish the whole planet with this beautiful angelic energy. So if we resonate with the Arcturian energy, we are really invited to call in the Arcturians, call in the Arcturian energy for support, for healing, and to ask for the opening of our heart, to ask for the healing of our sacral chakra, the healing of our emotions, asking for the flow of emotional energies and for the release of all emotional energies which are not serving us right now. The release of all emotional energies which are not in alignment with our soul. And to allow this flow of light into our vessel, into our being, into our heart. And from this alignment with our heart, we are creating our garden. We are planting the seeds in our garden. And we are allowing the things to flourish. We are allowing the things to flourish 
that are in alignment with our soul. They're not coming from a place of emotional imbalances, but they're coming from a place of connection with our heart to really create what is in alignment with ourselves. We're creating this beautiful garden of Mother Gaia where everyone can thrive, not just ourselves, but everyone. An infinite gratitude to all the beings who have tuned into this message. I am thanking all the beings of light for their help. Thanking the Arcturians, thanking our guides, thanking Source Creator for this beautiful message. An infinite gratitude that we are using this wisdom to create our garden, to align with our soul, and to embody the spark of Source in our heart. And so it is, and it is so, and it is done. Sending infinite gratitude out to all. Thank you so much.